Kyle Erickson here. About two months ago, I was upgrading my setup and I was looking for a decent set of speakers to replace the cheap little pair that I was using at the time. I've always kind of skimped on my speakers for my desktop. And I think in large part that has been because of the type of work that I've been doing at my desk has been historically a lot different than it has been in the past year or so. Because audio has become such a large part of my day-to-day -day workflow, I was definitely due for an upgrade. The audio quality has just become way more important to me because of that shift. And a lot of the time, I wear headphones while I'm editing, but I do still like to play things back through my speakers as well, just to make sure that everything is sounding great. And hey, let's be honest, sometimes it's just nice to pump out music without having something suctioned to your head. I looked at a lot of different options, but one brand that kept on popping up for me was Edifier. I'd see these suggested at different stores, but I also noticed a lot of creators sporting these. I, I just saw an Instagram story of James Matthews where he was using these along with so many other folks. So that did pique my interest quite a bit. They are affordable coming in at around $179. And by all accounts, they are pretty decent quality. And bookshelf speakers like this that support Bluetooth and sound very good can get expensive pretty quickly. Two of the most common Edifier speakers that you see in the wild are the R1280s and the R1700 BTS. The model I have here are the 1700s. Now, I've been using these for around two months. You may have seen a short clip of me unboxing these and a brief mention of these in a setup video that I. I did shortly after I got them. I hadn't used them for long enough at that time to do a full in-depth review, but I think after pushing audio through these after many hours now, I'm definitely a lot more informed. To start things off, I do wanna mention how much I love the design of these. One of the more subtle things I love about them over most other bookshelf speakers, even more expensive high-end speakers, is they do have this angled enclosure that has a lot more style than your run-of-the-mill boxy four-sided speaker. I love design choices that are simple but have enough variation to differentiate them from other models, and these definitely fit that description. They kind of have almost an aggressive aesthetic to them, but they aren't too busy or over the top. The finish is what Edifier calls walnut. I probably wouldn't call this walnut. It does have quite a red tinge to them compared to your standard walnut finish that's usually more of a dark brown, similar to what's on my Nomad base station. These are also MDF cabinets that are coated with vinyl, so it's not real wood, which is kind of to be expected at this price. And I think visually, if I could change one thing about these, it would be this finish, but that's just my personal opinion. I just find these a bit hard to match with my gear. I've actually been thinking about wrapping these in white or something, but anyway, that's just my opinion, uh, and that's really pretty trivial. They don't look cheap at all, and they come with two removable mesh grill covers, so definitely if you want a bit more of a subtle look, you can put these on. I always just leave them off because I do like the look of them a lot more without them. As you can see on the front, You've got a four inch woofer and a three quarter inch tweeter. Each speaker is six inches wide, nine and three quarter inches deep and eight inches tall. So they are a decent size, uh, big enough to push out a lot of sound, but small enough that you can easily place them on most desks or surfaces. Uh, on the back, there are two RCA inputs, a subwoofer output and a power switch. While on the side of the right speaker, you have three control knobs. Uh, the knobs themselves are metal, they look sleek and move around smoothly, but there's no play or wiggle room in there. Uh, the top two are for bass and treble control, while the bottom knobs control the volume and the active input. Uh, I've mostly just used these to set the treble and the bass levels, otherwise I don't really touch these. The volume I'm usually controlling remotely through whatever I've got these paired with, and I don't normally switch inputs. Also on the front there is this little circular area with an LED status indicator along with a receiver for the remote. I think they probably could have made that a little bit less conspicuous. I might be nitpicking a little bit with that, and I don't know where the ideal placement is, but it's something that I did notice right away when I set these up. And speaking of that remote, it is nice that they included one of these. I do really like the button placement on the remote. It sits in your hand really nicely and you don't have to fumble around trying to click anything. I will say that it does scratch up pretty easily and the range isn't great if you're not pointing it directly at the receiver, but it does the job in any case. 
Uh, I'm just using these speakers at my desk. So the only time that I really ever use this is if I'm sitting back watching something on YouTube or on Netflix. But I could see maybe if you had these set up out of reach or away from a computer or a phone, a remote might be something that you need to consider more, but that's totally not the case for me. The frequency response on these is 52 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, and they have 66 Watts RMS or continuous power. Now they do get quite loud, especially if you're using them at a desk. I don't know that you'd really ever want to push these all the way up ever. I know I certainly wouldn't, but maybe I'm just getting old. Uh, I can't even remember the last time I cranked up my music full blast. Uh, even when I have my headphones on and Apple sends me a notification telling me that my headphones have been too loud, internally I'm like, I really need to be more careful. I will say that the sound quality is a clear step above your standard cheap speaker set that you'll find at Best Buy or Amazon. The thing that I love about them is you get great audio without having to have a separate detached subwoofer, which I found can be awkward to place around a desk. I've had quite a few setups that have had that separate wired subwoofer and it almost always ends up on the floor under the desk. It's usually pretty ugly to look at and it can kind of get in the way. You probably end up kicking it and scuffing it up. That being said, these speakers only have a four inch woofer. So it's not gonna be like a 10 or 12 inch subwoofer you have in your car. So if you do wanna push up the bass, you do have that sub output on the back. But in general, these have excellent sound quality on their own. And I think that you'll see that's a pretty common sentiment from everyone that owns these. Uh, higher frequencies are crisp and clear, the mids are balanced and the bass is pretty impressive even for a four inch speaker. But all in all, they produce a clear full sound that you're probably not going to improve on unless you start looking at premium speakers that are a tier up from these, but those can usually cost at least double. And unless you're an audiophile and you're listening to really high quality uncompressed audio, it's probably not worth it. The R1700 BTSs sound fantastic, especially if you're just listening to Spotify or just throwing a movie on. I know it won't do it any justice, but I just wanted to show you that these will in fact push out decent audio. I'll give you a sample. Just keep in mind, if you're watching this with tin can audio, it's gonna sound like tin can audio. Beyond the sound quality, one of the biggest draws for me to these speakers was the Bluetooth connectivity. As some of you probably know, I like to keep a fairly clean desk space without many wires kicking around. So having Bluetooth functionality is definitely a plus in that aspect. I've used these pretty much exclusively with Bluetooth and my Mac, while also occasionally pairing these to my phone. And in both cases, it has been great. These have Bluetooth 5.0 with AppDeck support, and for regular usage, there hasn't been much latency. I don't know that you'll really notice much of a delay in audio if you're watching something. The only time I personally notice is if I have these on and I'm editing a video. The audio is just a hair behind the video, but editing is a whole different animal compared to just casual usage. Oftentimes we're just talking about a fraction of a second where I'm making cuts, so I wouldn't expect it to be that accurate, but for just consuming content, you can't really tell at all, at least on my Mac mini or on my phone. I will say on my Mac mini, there has been some instances where the audio has cut out on me for half a second, but I'm not really sure that that's Edifier's fault. Probably something that I have to investigate further, but Apple's Bluetooth on Macs has been kind of notorious in the past for dropping Bluetooth packets. Uh, I haven't experienced this on any of my M1 devices yet, but it would happen to me all the time on my old Intel machines. Uh, but that may be the case here as I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse and Bluetooth headset. And there's just a whole bunch of Bluetooth devices around me. Uh, I will say that on my phone, I've never had this issue at all, but even on my Mac, it's really rare that that does ever happen. I've never had any actual drops where it disconnects from the device or any trouble pairing at all. The one thing that I haven't paid too much attention to is the range.
change, which I think is trivial for me because these are sitting at my desk and I feel like for most people, it's probably going to be the same. It's different with headphones because they're on your head and the chances of you moving around with those on is a lot greater than a set of speakers that aren't set up to be mobile. Other than the minor issue where the audio blanks out very rarely, which I think is actually the computer, not the speakers, the connection has been amazing. I think amazing sums up my overall impression of these speakers. For the price, it's pretty hard to beat these. Sure, there are a few things that could be better. I'm not 100% sold on that wood color and the remote is a bit flimsy. I think it would be really cool to see these brands just start ditching remotes entirely and start using apps instead. It just reduces the overall carbon footprint a bit and it does give you a little bit more flexibility. Uh, you're already using Bluetooth, so why not do something like that? Uh, but as far as sound quality goes and the functionality of these speakers, you'd be hard pressed to find something that does it better than the R1700 BTSs for that price. Uh, that being said, let me know if you have found a set of speakers that you really like in the comments down below, or if you just want to say hi, you can do that as well. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. It does help me out a lot. If you want to see more videos like this and more tech related content, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon to get notified anytime that I release new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.